Welcome everyone to, and my name is Lisa Zizi, and I'll be your moderator for this class. And welcome to another lecture presented by the Tampa class. This is a school and not a church, and neither are we, are we affiliated with any religious organization. The school is a nonprofit, non denominational, religious, and scientific research organization. We are dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh our Elohim and the operation of his eternal purpose, pattern, and plan operating throughout eternity to this present day. Now, this school was established as the result of a divine vision and revelation given to our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. We hold classes in the United States and in various other countries, foreign countries, and the Tampa branch was established in 1996. Um, at this time, I'd like to introduce to you our Dean, Dr. Joel Turner, and our president, Dr. Cynthia Smith. So in this school, we use the true, correct, and original name and title of the Father, the Word or Son, and the Holy Spirit, which are contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh, and it has been improperly substituted by Lord. The true title of the Word or Son is Elohim, and it has been improperly substituted by God. And the name of the Holy Spirit, manifested in or out of a physical body, is Yahshua, and it has been erroneously substituted by Jesus Christ. So Lord and God are titles and not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are Lord's many and God's many. But we now know that each Lord must have a name and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title, which means that Elohim is the title that our creator chose for himself. Now, Jesus is a name, but it is an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part in any good dictionary or encyclopedia would prove that neither the Hebrew language, the Greek language, nor the Latin language have any characters or letters in their alphabets that would produce the sound made by this letter J. And neither was there a J in the English language until some 1400 years after the Messiah's death. Therefore, making such names as Jesus and Jehovah simply impossible renderings of the true and original name of our Father and His Son. Christ is a title just like Lord and God. Now, Yahweh is pure spirit, and in this state, he is incomprehensible and inscrutable. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits, and bounds of everything. Now, we have Yahweh symbolized on this chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself because a cloud has no particular shape or form. We have drawn this cloud all around the edges of this chart to show you that everything on the chart is within the cloud. And in like manner, everything in the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Now, Yahweh, knowing that man could not perceive of him in this pure spirit state, took on shape and form right within himself as Elohim. This is the word or son, a super incorporeal being that is having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. This form could only be seen in divine visions and understood in divine revelations. And later on, this self-same spirit manifested himself in a physical body and walked the earth plane as Yahshua the Messiah, whom the world calls Jesus Christ. Now, there is only one name given unto salvation, and we must know that name. So the simple yet intelligent question that we should all ask ourselves is, what was the name of the Savior during the time that he walked the earth plane? 
and a further understanding of this name and title may be had by reading the preface of a Holy Name Bible. Also in the school, we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. It is called the divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel up out of Egypt, he called Moses to the top of Mount Sinai, and he showed him the tabernacle pattern in a vision. Yahweh then instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. The pattern consists of a most holy place, a holy place, and a court roundabout. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. In this school, we show proof how that everything in the universe is made and operates according to the structure and function of this threefold tabernacle pattern and how that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. This school also has 10 primary constitutional aims or objectives, and they are as follows. First is to help you find and know Yahweh our Elohim as he really is and actually exists. Second is to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah without distinction of race or nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Third is to investigate the unexplained spirit law or so-called law of nature and the powers latent in man. Fourth is to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religions, psychology, philosophy, and modern both practical and occult science. Fifth is to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Sixth is to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensations and ages. Seventh is to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. Eighth is to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Ninth is to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained there is no other name given among men whereby man can be saved, saving the name of Yahshua, the Messiah. And tenth is to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua, the Messiah, with the hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state. Our watchword, peace. Our slogan, speak the truth. So tonight, we will have a prayer by Dr. Willie Kelly. We will have a music selection selected by Sherry Williams. Dr. Sherry Williams. Our scripture reading will be 1 John, the fifth chapter. And our readers and, and Pam uh, Turner will be our um, excuse me, one of our readers tonight. And the second reader would be Dr. Sherry Williams. Are you there, Willie? Hi Willie, can you read? Can you be uh, say the prayer for us tonight? Go ahead and pick someone else. Okay. Tonight, um, Colin Trotter, would you do give the prayer for us tonight? Why well, certainly. Can you hear me? <clears throat> yes yes okay good evening family it's good to be here and let us all bow in our hearts and in our minds and thank you Allie, for have uh bringing us together and for uh the knowledge that he's given us and let us uh ask that he uh give the words to the speakers 
and that it's an edifying class tonight. Yes, these things in his son's name, Yeshua the Messiah, let us all say, Hallelujah. 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 <clears throat> Hello, child, hear my word. So great. Thank you. Yep. <clears throat> Good evening, class. I'll be reading from the Holy Name Bible, containing the Holy Name version of the Old and New Testaments, critically compared with ancient authorities and various manuscripts, revised by A.B. Trainer of the Scripture Research Association, Incorporated. First John, the fifth chapter. Whosoever believeth that Yahshua is the Messiah, is born of Yahweh. And everyone that loveth him that begot, loveth him also that is begotten of him. But this we know, that we love the children of Yahweh, when we love Yahweh and keep his commandments. For this is the love of Yahweh, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. 
For whatsoever is born of Yahweh overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcometh the world, but he that believeth that Yahshua is the Son of Yahweh? This is he that came by water and blood, Yahshua the Messiah, not by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit that beareth witness, because the Spirit is truth. For thee, there are three things that bear witness, the Spirit, the water, and the blood, and these three agree in one. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of Yahweh is greater. For this is the witness of Yahweh, which he hath testified to, of his Son. He that believeth on the Son of Yahweh hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not Yahweh hath made him a liar, because he believeth not the record that Yahweh gave of his Son. And this is the record that Yahweh hath given to us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. He that hath the Son hath life, and he that, that hath not the Son of Yahweh hath not life. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of Yahweh, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of Yahweh. And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if, ye, if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And if we know that he heareth us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. If any man see his brother sin a sin which is not unto death, he shall ask, and he shall give him life for them that sin not unto death. There is a sin unto death. I do not say that he shall pray for it. All unrighteousness is sin, and there is a sin not unto death. We know that whosoever is born of Yahweh sinneth not, but he that is begotten of Yahweh keepeth himself, and that wicked one toucheth, toucheth him not. And we know that we are of Yahweh, and the whole world lieth in wickedness. And we know that the Son of Yahweh has come, and hath given us an understanding, that we may know him that is true, and we are in him that is true, even in his son Yahshua the Messiah. This is the true Elohim and eternal life. Little children, keep yourselves from idols. That was First John, the fifth chapter. Hallelujah. Well, good evening, brethren. Um, our first speaker this evening will be, oh, I'm sorry. Did I miss something? Okay. Um, our first speaker this evening will be Dr. Jennifer Marshall. Well, hello. Um, I appreciate that you asked me to speak. However, I don't really think I have anything that I can say tonight. Um, well, according to the scripture, I have been looking at um, a transcript, which has been very interesting to me. Um, uh oh, here it is. It's it's about. Um, manifestations and principles. I just have a few things to talk about. Um, it is talking about um, of the whale. I'm sorry, I, my, I'm a nervous and so sure. a Jonah and the whale and that he was buried in that whale and he cried out to Yahweh from that whale, from that whale, or it's not a whale, actually it's a fish. And it was made by Yahweh. And there are principles in here that go along with that. Because um, for one thing, uh, it talks about how the principle of the, of the um, sorry, I'm so nervous, I can't think. <laughs> um, okay. First of all, he called, he said he called Peter, um, I may have to work on this some more because I've been working on it and trying to get a grip on it. 
but it, he was in that whale, which was like a, a death. He was buried in there. And um, it was like Yahshua in the, in, in, in the grave there. You know, I'm going to do it the best I can, but I really have to look at this some more. It's about the principle of the whale that he was in that whale. And then he was sent in to deliver the people that he was sent there for. And Yahweh was in a rock. He was in that grave there. And he was also sent to save. In other words, it was the same principle because he was in that grave and he went down and saved and went to the people that were um, dead. And he went to console them and to tell them the truth. Also, um, he was let out of that fish to go save the people of, and I can't remember their name, now because Nineveh. that huh Nineveh. Nineveh and that was the same principle also he called Peter Cephas which meant a, a hollow rock now Peter he went on after at Pentecost to help save the people and teach the truth about Yahweh and now there's more of this but I haven't got too much more but it's the thing about principles and manifestations the manifestations can be very, very different, and and the, but the principle is the same. Also, Yahweh produced that fish. He produced that fish for him to be in it. And then later on, he also, uh, the word is not produced, it's the different word, but he also, when he, they saw them, he came and saw the the apostles that were fishing and they fished all night but they couldn't they couldn't catch anything and he said put the fish on the other side of the boat and they fought many and when they were out there um fishing they fished a lot but when they came to the shore they saw that he had well that fish that no that he was in was prepared by Yahweh but Yahshua was there on the beach and he also produced that fish. He cooked them a fish and it was, he cooked it and, it, and made it edible. But so he was that, he, he produced most fish. He, so I think, I think I've had about as more, much as I can say. And I'm sorry, I was a little, and I, uh, unsure of how I was saying it, but I did the best I could. Thank you. Thank you, Jennifer. Our next speaker will be Dr. Daryl Hughes. Good evening, everyone. I enjoyed the remarks of the first speaker. Let's get, um, I'd like to get Genesis 1 and 1, if we can. Genesis 1 and 1. In the beginning, Elohim created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the spirit of Elohim moved upon the face of the waters. And Elohim said, let there be light, and there was light. And Elohim saw the light, that it was good. And Elohim divided the light from the darkness. And Elohim called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. Keep going. Give me a couple going. more verses. Yeah, a couple more. Okay. And Elohim said, I'm sorry, let me see if I'm, my pages might be stuck together. And Elohim said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters and let it divide the waters from the waters. And Elohim made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. And Elohim called the firmament heaven, and the evening and the morning were the second day. You don't have to keep going with that. I just wanted to get get a little bit of the creation. And Yahweh, um, we know that Yahweh is pure spirit, and in this state, he's incomprehensible and inscrutable. And in order allow himself to be known. He he came forth right within himself as Yahweh Elohim. 
and he created wow. the heavens and the earth and everything that's talked about in Genesis. He created it wow. all. And um, on, on the when Moses came up and had this vision, this is the only reason we know this. And because of his vision and revelation. And he, when he was up on this mount, he saw Elohim transform into the tabernacle pattern and then the, saw the whole creation come out of that pattern. Um, I want to go to the scripture lesson now. I am going to tie this together. But give me a scripture and just jump down to uh, five and, and uh, seven. First John five and okay. Five and seven. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit, and these three are one. See, there's three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit, and these three are one. And we talk about it on this chart here that Yahweh and Elohim, Yahweh and pure spirit, and then Elohim which is the intermediate form, and then the Holy Spirit in, in or out of a body, which is Yahshua coming down into the flesh. And they all bear witness of that which is in heaven. Keep reading. And there are three that bear witness in earth, the spirit and the water and the blood, and these three agree in one. There's three that bear witness in earth, the spirit, and the water, and the blood. And now we we could see, uh, if, we go, if you can go to the elementary chart, please. Okay. We have, we have witnesses, it's bearing witness, the spirit, the water, and the blood, where you could see each of those in each of the plates uh, with, uh, you had the, the spirit with uh, the angel leading them out of of the most holy place and the water and the blood with the, the death and the toil and the, and pregnancy and that kind of thing and with the noah's ark you have i may have messed that one up somebody else could fix that um with noah's ark you, you had uh this um blood water spirit i guess if i do it that way you had noah preaching and getting the blood off of his hands um and then you have the water from the flood and the spirit opened the door of the ark for them to enter into it. And you could run a line all the way down on blood, water, spirit, 40, um, giving witness in the earth. Now, the point of this is that it's giving witness in the earth to what was in the heavens. And that's why I wanted the creation read. Everything was created. What's the scripture where there was all created for him? Kathy or someone, do you know where that is? Colossians 1, around 16, 17. I'll get it real quick. I have it. Okay. 14. Um, well, I'll pick it up at Colossians 1 and 14. In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins, who is the image of the invisible L, the firstborn of every creature. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. See, everything was everything was created by him and for him. It was the purpose. Read that again from where you started. I'm going to interrupt you as you're going. This from is 14. Colossians 1 and 14 in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Who is the image of the invisible L, the firstborn of every creature? The Elohim is the firstborn of every creature, see? And it's in his image because it's it's. For him, and it's in his image. It was created by him and for him. Go back to the the um, Moses chart again, please. It was created by him and for him, and in his image. So when Moses is up here and he sees 
Elohim transform into that tabernacle pattern and then into transforming into the days of creation according to that pattern, showing that everything that was created was created in his image and it was created to show forth him. It was the purpose of it. And, and uh, when, when the previous speaker was talking about a manifestation and a principle, um, the manifestation is the physical. <laughs> everything, everything he created was a manifestation of a principle showing forth him. See, it was all created in him, his image, and it was created to show forth mm -hmm. him so mm -hmm. that we could learn about him. We have to have a manifestation in order to get a principle. You know, you think about with, with uh, Yahweh Elohim in his pure spirit state, you cannot understand, you can't comprehend him, you can't perceive of him with our physical eyes in this state. So he took on shape and form as Elohim, uh, the word or son, which is in an intermediate state that can only be seen in divine visions and revelations. And then he came down into a physical body, the Holy Spirit in a physical body as Yahshua, the Messiah, see, in a concrete form. And these two forms are, man they're, <laughs> even they're somewhat manifestations of Yahweh. <laughs> they're, two, they're two witnesses or manifestations of Yahweh, see. And the point is, give me Romans 1, 19 and 20. Romans we're 1 not and about the manifest, We're not about the manifestations down here, except that this is where we could see Yahweh with our physical eyes is through the manifestation. Right. I know it's, it's, spirit, it's a, a vision, but it's still being manifest. Go ahead. Romans 1 and 19, because that which may be known of Yahweh is manifest in them. For Yahweh has showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. See, we're without excuse because we have a manifestation of him by the things that are made, see? And, and uh, he, he, Yahweh, in pure spirit state, we can read the very first verse part of that again. 19, because that which may be known of Yahweh is manifest That's right in there. them. That's mm -hmm. good right there. That which may be known of Yahweh. And I know I'm, I'm a stickler with that may because my father was a stickler with may. Because I, when I was a kid, I'd say, hey, dad, can I go to the store? And he'd say, well, you, you're able to, but you don't have my permission, you know, to understand the difference between the word may and can. Um, and may means to be given permission can means to have the ability to do it see so he's given us permission to know him and obviously if he's given us permission he also has we also have to be given the ability to do it too it's implied in there see and he said and and you know there's people right in this class that have a hard time um i i'm not, not i've heard it a couple of times where people have a hard time with that saying that you can't know yahweh you can only know elohim if you know Elohim, you know Yahweh. He's a manifestation of Yahweh. And Yahshua is a manifestation of Yahweh. The whole creation is a manifestation of Elohim, which is a manifestation of Yahweh. No, we can't see him with our physical eyes, but we can know him. There's a difference between those two things uh, because we're going to know him and know him spiritually. It's said in the scriptures today that spirit that spirit is truth, see, and and to really know the truth about anything that's important is to know spirit. That's what the spirit, and we, <laughs> oh, oh man, I love, uh, I'm going to grab a, grab another jump ahead a little bit, but uh, give me a, the scripture lesson uh, I want to get. Where did it say it? It said something about he who knows. Oh, um, verse 10. 
1 John 5 and 10. He that believeth on the Son of Yahweh hath the witness in himself. He if you believe in him, you have to have the witness in you to believe in him. See, we, we can only know him because he lets us know him. That's the point that I'm making, that he has to let us know him. So all of this, all of this is a manifestation to a principle. And we don't want to get hung up on the manifestation. And, you know, they're, they're types and shadow of him. They're not him, but they, they witness to him. And there's so many great witnesses. And that's why, like, the tabernacle pattern is so beautiful. The tabernacle pattern is beautiful because Yahweh Elohim is beautiful, <laughs> who's manifesting Yahweh in pure spirit form, see, the attributes. Are, and that's what we want to see. We want to see those attributes and who he is. Of course, we have to have him in us to do that. Um, but uh, people get hung up on the manifestations. Just about everything in creation has been worshipped as a god. Um, and and uh, he's the one that created it. And so when you think about that, that it's so absurd that we would worship anything. Um, that's him. So everything is really showing forth him. And it's such a perfect, um, a perfect thing to be able to see. Uh, how everything shows forth it. I've talked about like in in the unity of Yahweh and the unity of the Spirit. It's it's such a beautiful thing. Um, I was I was talking in another class the other day about psychotherapy. I, I've done that a lecture on it a little bit, um, but you know everything's threefold. In psychotherapy, you have um, when they do assessments. Now they've created a lot of other terms. But the basic one that's always been accepted when you do an assessment, you do a biopsychosocial assessment, threefold biopsychosocial assessment on a person. Now, people have brought in other things like spiritual and, and you know cultural, but most of those will fit under those three categories. Like spiritual would go under social, and you know they, they all go under it. Now, the thing is, and this has always fascinated me as I've learned things in school, when you go to college and you go into higher education, you start specializing in things. What we do when we learn things, because we're limited in these physical bodies and our physical brains, we, we separate out the things that we're learning about. So, um, but we have a tendency to come, uh, to start to think that they're actually separate things and they're not. They're really just one whole. They're they're aspects of that one whole, but we separate them so much. So in medicine and mental health and everything, the ter the phrase to, to try to combat us from doing that, they came up with a phrase like holistic medicine. Uh, because the point is, the truth is that every aspect of us is just us. It's not three different people. <laughs> you know, you could compare it with that. You have... Um, you know, um, stress. Um, when, when people get stressed, uh, our body our body physically reacts to it. Um, this is sometimes hard for people to understand, but um, the body looks at stress the same way it would look at if you're being attacked with a gun. Um, and it kicks in the fight or flight response, the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous systems. When you are stressed about something, your body thinks you're in physical danger, literally. And what it does is it, re it releases cortisol, which is one of the, even though it's necessary for fight or flight, it's one of the most dangerous chemicals um, and causes all kinds of physical problems. Um, when people have panic attacks, they don't understand, you know, why, why would somebody, you know, get sick and have heart pain and chest pain and get headaches? It's because your body is literally releasing chemicals to prepare you to, to run for your life or to fight for your life. That's what happens, see? You can't treat just a person as, it's sort of thinking of, of God as either Yahweh or Elohim or Yahshua. Um, that, that, that's, we're doing the same thing when we do that, when we think it's three persons, 
It's one person. And Dr. Kinley had that intentionally written onto this chart, Yahweh, Elohim, and Yahshua on, on, on the Elohim figure on this chart here. I'm showing that in each of these states, he's Yahweh, Elohim, and Yahshua. You could write it in the cloud, and you could write it down on the body if you wanted to, see? Um, and Dr. Kinley had that put on there. It wasn't on there originally when they first made it. But that was a show forth that it's three. Um, Kathy, when I first came into class, um, tried to help me, and it took a long time <laughs> to understand the difference between the unity of the Spirit and the transmutation of the Spirit. Because they're not, they're connected, but they're not exactly the same. He's a unity in all of the states that he's in. Him coming from one state to another and then to another where we call him Yahweh and Elohim and Yahshua in those different states is the transmutation of spirit. But in each of those um, states of his uh, transmutation, he is still one and he's still Yahweh, Elohim, and Yahshua. See? And I brought up the psychologically because that's how we are. We're the same way. We 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 exist that way. Um, and so it's all a man. I love the manifestation and principle thing. I just think it's beautiful. I, I'll have to check out what that, that transcript you're reading because I, I think that's so important because we get mixed up in those. Things can manifest, and I, I, I don't even know if I should go here, but things can manifest there's things that have been used to manifest um, both um, righteous principles and unrighteous principles. I mean, Yahweh snake, his snake ate up the magician, Pharaoh's magician snakes. <laughs> um, so, uh, and I know there's principles that are different, but he, he could be, what? somebody give me a definition of Yahweh. Actually, two, yeah, I want the definition of Yahweh and Aya Asher Aya. Anybody have that or just want to say it? Well, Yahweh, he who causes to exist. He, he who causes to exist. <clears throat> Aya Asher Aya means I well, before will we, we, I will wait, wait. speak. Okay. I Asher I means I will be what I will to be. So we got Yahweh means he who causes to exist. There is nothing that exists in the creation that Yahweh didn't cause it to exist. That includes everything, both in the physical realm and in the spiritual realm. He caused the mystery of iniquity to exist. He caused everything that you could think of to exist. There's nothing he didn't cause to exist. It's all manifesting him. And then you get into the issue of manifesting the, you know, pe people, why did he create Satan? All that. I'm not going to go. There's so many places you can go with that. But the truth is, they're all going to show forth him. Um, just really quickly, you know, um, he, he talked about to, that how he rate, he said, Pharaoh where he was and raised him up to show forth his, not Pharaoh's, Yahweh's power and greatness. See? The mystery of iniquity is needed for the contrast. you got to have both sides. Uh, but that's a whole other topic. I can go off on that. I I'm not going to keep going, um, but I really did enjoy the remarks of the first speaker. And we just have to remember that this is all about seeing him and getting to know him. Um, and he needs to be in us, as the scripture said, the witness has to be in us um, to be able to see that. And um, uh, just being thankful that uh, we got this place to come to keep learning more. So I'm going to shut up and learn more. <laughs> All praises and glory go to Yahshua. Hallelujah. Thank you, Daryl. Our next speaker will be Dr. Sherry Williams. I kind of felt that coming <clears throat> in the pit of my stomach. And I was just here looking up Yahweh, actually. Uh, good evening. And uh, let me say, I enjoyed the comments of the previous speakers. And, um, you know, it's it's just a blessing whenever, you know, um, 
when y'all, there's so many things going through my mind too, because I've been reading some transcripts and things. And um, so, but, um, but it, we, we are truly blessed. I mean, you know, I just can't really say that or emphasize it enough because, you know, in talking to people um, and something recent, you know, and, um, and talk to them and mention, you know, had talked to them about the name and stuff and they, and they still want to use Jesus. And you, 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 you know, you, and Dr. Kinley, I was reading the transcript where he was talking about this. So he was talking about the book of Jasher actually, but he said, it can't be because there's no J. And he said in the transcript, he was saying, I've told you, I don't know how many times, you know, there's no J. You know, there's no J in Hebrew, there's no J in Latin, and there's no J in Greek. And I'm going to be all over the place right now for a minute, because that also took me back to the class the other day. And I um, got home from work and I wanted to look it up again, the, the, the scripture that was called where it talked about um, when Yahshua was crucified. And let me, um, oops, let me get that. <clears throat> When he was crucified and how that term was written above the cross and um, the, the scripture was gotten the other day that said um, <clears throat> it was written. Do you all remember uh, if somebody can help me? It was written in Hebrew. It was written in Latin and it was written in Greek. That's right. And um, I forget where it, where it is actually in the scriptures. Yeah, um, yeah. and it said, it G I believe that the point was that it was Jesus, right? Which was impossible. Right. Jay? There was no J right. in any of those languages. Right, that it could not have been Jesus. It never could have been Jesus because there is no J in those languages. And it says right in the Bible. And people read the same Bible and it doesn't matter what Bible it is. They all say this. That it was written in, you know, the ones I mean that people, the prominent ones that people use, I should say, because I mean, I don't know that, I, uh, of course, I haven't, I can't be a witness to have read all every Bible, but, um, <clears throat> but they're going to, if they're translated from the King James version of the Bible, they're most likely going to say this, this same thing that this, this title, and I think it says it, I think it says it that way. Yeah, I found it. Do you want to okay, get that? Yes, please. Okay, so it's John 19 and 18, or 19 and 19. And Pilate wrote a title and put it on the cross. And the writing was Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Can you start over, Pam? I, I kind of got distracted. Sure, sure. Mm -hmm. Um, John 19 and 19 and Pilate wrote a title title that's what I wanted to make sure I heard uh -huh. he, title okay and put it on the cross put it on the cross and the writing was Jesus of Nazareth the king of the Jews uh -huh. this title do you want me to pause go on this title you. then then re this title then read many of the Jews for the place where Jesus was crucified was nigh to the city and it was written in Hebrew and Greek and Latin. Mm -hmm. And it says that it was written in Hebrew, Greek, and Latin. So, but it couldn't have been Jesus. It's an impossibility because to this very day, there is no J in those languages to this very day, you know, uh, you know, uh, May 8th, 2024 there is no j in those languages and there never was a j in those languages and there never will be and i you know recently too i had been looking at that letter j and where it came from and oh man i can't remember now but i i think it was my um it's and it's at my job actually it's a children's dictionary so i use it um a lot with my kids, even though they're, they're they're younger, I use their children's dictionary to for ideas on words and things like that, you know, and pictures. So I looked up the letter J in that dictionary, and it even had some interesting comments. And I can't remember right now, so I don't want to say, but it was pointing to that that letter was the last letter. You know, it talked about when it came into existence, even in a children's dictionary, a children's dictionary. Sometime when I, um, if I'm called again, I'll, I'll, and I have it, I'll, I'll mention that. But this is a children's dictionary, 
and it had the letter J in there. And um, this is where, where I was going with this. But again, you know, we are true. This is the thing that, you know, these little things are so profound. And, you know, that's one of the things that stumped me too a little bit with this um, with this teaching is that, you know, it had been it had been talked about and preached really hard that you have to have a profound knowledge of this gospel of this teaching you know and i'm looking profound i'm looking like phd profound you know or high you know but these are profound understandings just under because everybody doesn't see it I, I like i said i was just talking to somebody yesterday and and i had talked to them about the name and we had talked about scriptures and things like that. And, and I, all of us are witnesses to that. All of us have that witness, I, I pretty much. I, I, there's probably not one of us on this call, uh, this, this Zoom class that have not spoken to somebody and talked about that letter J, that there was no J, no Jesus. Um, at some point in our time in, um, in class. And so, um, and people just don't, they they don't believe it. They don't believe it. And Daryl just got the scripture. Let's get that again. First John five and ten. First and that's John. all what yeah, you know, and the bottom line kind of like if you kind of summarize things up a little bit, you know, that's what Yahweh wants. He wants us to believe on him who he, you know, and but he didn't leave it up to us believing in just nothing. Like, you know, he left it with witnesses that we have witnesses and we have evidence to base this belief on. It's not a blind faith. It's not a blind belief. He's, you know, and we'll get Hebrews, the 11th chapter, but go on, Pam, five, uh, 1 John 5 and 10. He that believeth on the Son of Yahweh hath the witness in himself. Yes. See there? He that believeth on the Son of Yahweh hath the witness. We have the witness right within ourselves. We talk about that all the time. But go on. He that believeth not Yahweh hath made him a liar. Yep. Because he believeth not on not the record that Yahweh gave of his Son. Yep. And this is the record that Yahweh hath given to us eternal life. And this life is in his Son. He that hath the Son hath life. And he that hath not the son of Yahweh hath not life. Mm -hmm. This is beautiful. And I tell you, there is just so many ways to spring off of this. So many ways. Who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of Yahweh revealed? You know, um, oh, there's just so much that Yahweh has given us. But um, uh, let me go slow down and get uh, Hebrews. I think it's the 11th or 12th chapter. Okay. We're asked about yeah i think that's 12 oh, oh, get that mixed up. Oh. <laughs> oh i get that okay hebrews 12 and 1 wherefore seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us and let us run with patience the race that is set before us and I tell you, you know, he's testing each and every one of us right now, because I tell you, he has to give us some patience in these uh, in these days and times and what's going on in this earth play, uh, plane, you know, he has to give us some patience and um, uh, to, to in order to sustain us, you know, in this uh in this physical world, because we know, we know that this is the mystery of iniquity's playground. We know that he's the, the ruler of this world, you know, and he is really wreaking havoc, right? Because he knows he has but a short time, but, um, okay. So we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses as the speakers were talking about, you know, um, both speakers and the manifestations and the principles. And I know I can remember too, uh, early on in class being confused about that, you know, of the manifestation and the principle, the manifestations change. And, and now I understand it. And, you know, it's interesting because I'm a teacher physically. So, you know, so there's different ways I have to present 
information to the students. Everybody doesn't receive or doesn't understand things the same way. Some are visual learners, some are verbal learners, some are kinesthetic or tactile where they touch and feel and have to handle things, you know, they learn that way, you know. So I understand now the manifestation, but the principle's not going to change. If I'm teaching them, you know, a, a, a math problem, and especially it works really good in math and science and, you know, um, you know, a principle of two plus two, that it, the, the principle doesn't change. Two plus two equals four. That's always going to be the case, you know, but the manifestation is going to change. I could use two of different items or whatever might, you know, suit the, the person, maybe something they're familiar with, you know, to help them understand it better. So we do that, those kinds of things, you know, um, in life, what are our children, raising our children, you know, if you have more than one child, they're different. So you may not teach them or show them things the same way. So the manifestations are going to change, but the principle, you're still going to teach them, it's not right to do this. It's not right to do that. You can't do this. You can't, you know, things like that. But there might be different manifestations in showing that or how to do something, how to, you know, uh, whatever it is, then, you know, you might have to present it to one child differently than you would another. And that's what Yahweh has provided for all of us. Can you imagine? And this is why it was on my mind. And, and I mentioned this before, and I, uh, I don't know, it just kind of popped into my head one day, you know, that, that, that concept that people have of a trinity. And, you know, and they really created a schizophrenic God. He, he'd be schizophrenic if, if you had three persons in one. I mean, what sense does that even, it doesn't even make any sense. So they're making Yahweh out to be a liar, just as he said in the scriptures. They make him out to be a liar. And it's not there, that's not the only place he had said that, you know? Um, and and so, but he's given us a way to understand him. And, 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 and it's truly a blessing that he's called us in here, sat us down and presented us and given us these witnesses uh, to, to base, um, actually we can go right to Hebrews, the 11th chapter, to base this on, mm -hmm. 11 and 1. Hebrews 11 and 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, mm -hmm. for by it... The That's, elders obtained a good report. Yes, there too. The elders obtained a good report. See, who hath believed our report? And to whom was the arm of Yahweh revealed? You know, and and he's just he's just given us so much. So going back to the scripture reading, first John, let's just go let, pick it up at the beginning. We can go right to the beginning. If somebody wants to help Pam, that's good. If not, then okay. First John five and one, mm -hmm. whosoever believeth that Yahshua is the Messiah is born of Yahweh. Mm -hmm. and so believe it that Yahshua is the Messiah is born of Yahweh. Go on. And everyone that loveth him that begot loveth him also that is begotten of him. Mm -hmm. by, by this, we know that we love the children of Yahweh when we love Yahweh and keep his commandments. Mm -hmm. For this is the love of Yahweh, that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not grievous. Mm -hmm. for, whatsoever is for whatsoever is born of Yahweh overcometh the world. Mm -hmm. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Even our faith. And you see, so faith um, is the evidence of things not seen. I hope I'm quoting that right, right? Because mm -hmm. <laughs> you get up here and like Jennifer said, you get a little nervous sometimes, you know, but now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. So here he's saying, you know, um, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith, you know? So go on. There's something I wanted to pick up. Well, go on. Five. Who is he that overcometh the world, but he that believeth that Yahshua is the son of Yahweh? Mm -hmm. 
He believed it because the Jews didn't believe that. Remember when he was talking to them, scribes and Pharisees, what they were saying, oh, he makes himself um, equal to God or something like some, something like that, you know? They didn't believe that he was the son of God when he was telling them that, son of Yahweh. He And he was telling them that. But then Nicodemus knew, right? Because he said, no man can do these things that thou doest, you know, except he be of Yahweh. So they they knew inside themselves, you know, they were a witness against themselves, right? Because they knew that, that no man could do these things, but it was the purpose of Yahweh. That's the beauty of this. It was the purpose of Yahweh. It couldn't be changed anyway, because that was his purpose, that this would happen. And then these things happened for our learning, for our admonition, so that we could see these and uh, these um, witnesses, and, and then get to know our first aim to help uh, you find and know Yahweh, our Elohim, as he really is and actually exists. And that's all this is culminated to down at the end of this age so that we could uh, know Yahweh, our Elohim, as he really is and actually exists. And then we could all jump down right on down to the 10th aim to inherit eternal life now in Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state by these witnesses that Yahweh has set up. And go on, Pam, let me let you go because here we're on this plate. We'll get down to, we're getting there. Okay, we're at six. This is yeah. he that came by water and blood, mm -hmm. even Yahshua the Messiah, not by water only, but by water and blood. You know how we clarified that? Not by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the spirit that beareth witness because the spirit is truth. Mm -hmm. Didn't he say that? I am the way, the truth, and the light. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Yahshua said that. And he is spirit, right? Because John 14 and 26. But the comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father is going to send in my name, Yahshua, he will, what, teach you all things and bring all things back to your remembrance whatsoever he has said to, unto us or taught us. Go on. Seven, for there are three that bear record in heaven, mm -hmm. the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit, and these mm -hmm. three are one. Mm -hmm. And there are three that bear witness in earth the spirit and the water and the blood. And these three agree in one. Yeah, and these three agree in one. So there are three that bear rec witness, that bear record, record. So remember, who has believed our report? Who has believed the record of Yahweh? Who has, you know, for there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit, and these three are one. And nowhere in the Bible does it say that these three are three. Nowhere does mm -hmm. it say that. And people take it and interpret it that way. These three are three. The, you know, that nowhere does it say it. It says Yahweh is a unity. God is a unity. If they want to read the King James Version, God is a unity. Nowhere does it say a duality. Nowhere does it say anything other than a unity or Yahweh is one. I believe if I, and somebody can correct me if you, you know, in other Bibles, again, I haven't read every Bible, but I know, you know, using this King James version of the Bible and this, that's what they, they, that's what's in there, you know? So these three are one. And then there are three in the earth plane and the, the uh, previous speakers were getting to this, that bear witness, witness, that witness to the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit being one. There are three things that witness to that. And that's going to be the Spirit, the water, and the blood. And as the speakers were talking about the manifestations and the principles and going through these events in the Bible, they all point that out. And it's all to point out Yahshua the Messiah, how 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. It's all pointing out that, that we can have confidence and assurity that this happened and how it happened, why it happened, for what reason, for what purpose. Because I know when I was younger, I remember asking that, like being or wondering about that purpose. What is the purpose? What is my purpose? What is this whole thing about? You know, this whole like creation and, and things, you know? 
So 1 Corinthians 15. 1 Corinthians 15 and 1. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also you have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. Mm -hmm. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, mm -hmm. how that the Messiah died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Mm -hmm. How? And we know now that the look up words, you know, and what that word means, how the little three letter word has such a powerful meaning by what name, by what power, to what extent, um, if somebody can throw some other ones out there, you know, um, you, but three letter word, never thought, never, I, I don't even remember you know, being, thinking about that word, how, prior to coming in the class, you know, and having it uh, broken down to me and explained, you know, just what the meaning of that word is. And that's one of uh, the other thing, one of the other things, many things that sets us apart from the world, you know, mm -hmm. in that this is a research Institute. This is the um, Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research. So we're researching things beyond the flesh that don't have to deal with the flesh because we know this flesh is not permanent. This flesh is temporary. Mm -hmm. Sherry, I have how. Okay. It's going to it's going to dirt. It's going back to dirt, or it's going to be scattered somewhere if people use cremation and things like that. It's going to be scattered, you know. So there's nothing that this physical body is gonna take take over, take on, take take with them when when the time is is has come. Your time has come. But go on. Thank you, Lisa. Mm -hmm. So the definition of how, number one, in what manner? Or way. Mm hmm Two. Manner or way. How? Three-letter word. Mm -hmm. Two. To what degree, extent, or amount? I don't even know if they teach this. Is, is Sarah on the on the Zoom? Um, yep. I think so. Sarah? Yeah. Because yeah. you're an English teacher, I believe, right? Yep. Do you teach the definition of the meaning of how? <laughs> well, at my level, I hope I don't have to, but <laughs> it is a big important one in our in our line, I guess. <laughs> yeah. But I I I'm like I don't even remember, you know, I mean they taught us to ask questions is what they and I'm thinking even in my elementary setting, I, I you know, going I, I haven't taught some of the upper like 4th and 5th yet in a while like interning, but um, like, I don't even remember them talking about the definition. You know, I, I guess they kind of broke it down, but they didn't emphasize it a lot. I do think I do remember now a little bit about the five W's and how, you know, that that was pretty much, though, the extent of, you know, these are how you ask questions. But what, when, where, why, you know, um, where. Uh, if I'd said that already, but the five, you know, the five W's and, and how, but I don't even know if they break it down really to, I, I know they don't break how down. I, I, I'm I pretty sure of that they don't break that down to what, not the definition that we have, but I'll, all right. Thank you, Sarah. <laughs> and go ahead, Lisa. Okay. We're on number three, the definition of the word how, in what state or condition? In what state or condition? Number four, for what reason or purpose? For what reason or purpose did Yahshua do this? For what reason? People want to say he did it for himself. Who? Who in their right mind would do that? Who? He didn't do it for himself. Why would somebody do this? Put themselves, subject themselves to this, this death. It talks about it horribly. Passion of the Christ. I never watched that movie. I couldn't. I couldn't. I, I mean, just reading about it is enough you know, and hearing about it, the lectures and things like that was enough for me. I didn't need to see it. I've seen other movies like and stuff, but I didn't need to see that because it, I, I know I'd just be boohooing all the way through it, you know, and I'd be angry at somebody. But <laughs> even knowing it's the purpose of Yahweh that it had to happen and stuff, mm -hmm. you know, but um, so 
And this so list what, gives the answers for what reason or purpose and the answers to take away sin. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. He died for, and then we know he had no sin. So, so how could he do this for himself? He took upon the sins of us, of the world. But so how could he die for himself? He had no sin. He went to John the Baptist, you know, when John was out there baptizing people to repentance. So they had to repent. And John was asking them, have you sinned? You know, and they, of course, there was nobody that could say, no, they hadn't sinned. No one but Yahshua. He's the only one that on the face of the earth that could ever say, no, I have not sinned. The only one. There is not another thing, a person, nothing. Alien, if people want to go there too, but nothing that could say that. They have not sinned. He's the only one. So what would he do this for? Why would he do it for himself? But go on um, a little bit, Lisa, and then Pam. Okay. So number five, it's at what price or for what, what sum? Price? Yes. He paid the price. In and his life. That. Mm -hmm. Go his on. life or that through him the world might be saved. Mm -hmm. Number six, to what effect, with what meaning? Mm -hmm. um, and then last one, by what name or designation? By what name? And they asked him, they asked him that. By what name? They asked Peter and John that when the, the you know, that council, when they gathered them up, you know, by what name, by what uh, power have you done this? You know, healed an impotent man. What, what, you know, and you think about it, why, what, what, what power would they have done this by? And they knew that, they knew that too, you know, but this is the purpose again of Yahweh. They knew within themselves that no man was going around healing somebody. It was the, the, the power of Yahweh, only through the power of Yahweh. Now, and, and let me clarify that because Yahshua, Yahweh did give power to that mystery of iniquity. It talks about that in Matthew, I think the 10th chapter, that he did give power to them to heal sickness. and and. But still, who was that by? It was still by Yahweh. Yahweh gave that power to the mystery of iniquity to be able to do that, you know, but that wasn't in righteousness either, you know, but that's a whole nother thing that I'm not getting into. But so here, First John 5 and 7. So there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. And there are three that bear witness in the earth, the um, Spirit and the water and the blood. And these three agree in one. So here we have these. Sherry, sure, you were really breaking up there. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I heard her. I heard her clear. OK, so we really we have all these witnesses. What is the 11th chapter of Hebrew say we are compassed about compassed? Can we get that word compassed about with so great a cloud? Great. Dr. Kinley emphasized that great is the mystery of Yahweh, but great. We are we are compassed about. And where else do we see? Oh, that's the beauty. Where else do we see the word compassed with Jonah? He was compassed about. He was surrounded with those, you know, when he was, and the first speaker talked about that with Jonah being in the, the belly of that fish, you know, and it was a specially prepared fish. I'm not sure if that's the word you were looking for, Jennifer, but, you know, but it was, he was a specially prepared fish that Yahweh had created for this purpose. So here we have these witnesses, the blood, the water, and the spirit. And we know that here with Adam, you know, um, they, that for their disobedience, they were expelled out of that garden of, of Eden. And so here um, uh, it says that Adam's going to toil by the sweat of his brow. And it talks about how that sweat was like great drops of blood. You know, so with Yahshua the Messiah, when he was in the garden and he was sweating great drops of blood, you know, but it's by not uh, not only by water, but by water and blood. So here we have though that principle and we have blood, water, and we know that this angel guarded the way to the gate and drove them out of that garden and guarded the way back into there. So we have the principles of of uh, 
blood, water, and spirit, the spirit and the water and the blood here. And then with um, Noah, Noah, the blood is placed on Noah's head to preach to the four corners of the earth plain that it's going to rain. It's going to rain. So that blood is placed on Noah's head. He preaches to the four corners to get that blood off of his head. But there's a death that takes place here during at that flood, you know, in the flood of then water. So we have blood and we have water. And then that spirit, as that uh, speaker talked about, second speaker talked about uh, the spirit of Yahweh closed the door to this ark and shut them in. And there was only one door, one window, one door, one way in, one, you know. So um, again, all of these things are pointing out Yahshua. These are the witnesses that Yahweh has given us to, to understand him. So I know I have the word compassed about. Yes, yes. Um, so um, it's used with an object, which makes it a verb. And so, because it's the, the, there's a lot of different definitions, but there's a couple really good ones in here. Okay. And it has um, to extend or stretch around, to hem in, surround, encircle, to encircle. Mm -hmm. We have um, to attain or achieve, accomplish, obtain. Mm -hmm. And then this one's really good. It says to comprehend to grasp as with the mind. Mm -hmm. So compass, to comprehend, to grasp with the mind. And that's what Yahweh has done for, has done with us. He's mm -hmm. allowed us to understand him, comprehend, to understand him as he really is and actually mm -hmm. exists. Because I can tell you with the 14 of us that are on this Zoom call or 14 plus, I'll say, um, you know, we probably pretty much all had our own thoughts, theories and concepts about our creator prior to coming in the class and Yahweh now has made that's one in understanding that. And, and so here again with Yahweh, you know, the record for there are three that bear record in heaven, the father, the word and the Holy spirit. And these three are one. And that's what, uh, Oh man, you, you know, this is so beautiful. It's, it's it sometimes, you know, I mean, words are just, you, you know, I think of, um, Paul, and I know I'm jumping a little bit, but I'm going to get back. But with Paul and Dr. Kinley, how they talk about, Paul talked about being called up to the third heaven and just, you know, witnessing or seeing things that just were unspeakable for a man to utter because there's with no witness for it. There's just, you know, and I think Dr. Kinley talked about that in a transcript, you know, there's just no witnesses for it. And Dr. Kinley was called up to that third heaven, but he's given us things that, for example, that may not be in the book, you know, like Yahshua coming to John the Baptist, you know, and it doesn't say in there that that's what John was asking him, but we know that it was a baptism unto repentance. So he had to been asking them, well, have you sinned? Because that's what John's purpose was. That's what his mission was. You know, and so so um, these things are but the principles are there. The manifestations are there. I can say that back up the principle of what what he had to say to John, you know, that, no, I haven't sinned. So that's why John would say to him, well, I have need to be baptized of you, you know, so we can understand these things. And it's like, you know, and I know I'm jumping again, but, you know, it's interesting how they have an article uh, going like going around with like parts of the word that you can, but you can still read it. Do you remember seeing something like that? Like it would say I W U D or L D or something, you know, and you could still read the article because in, because we can understand what it's saying. Do you, you, any of you guys remember seeing something like that at, at some point? I, th I believe so. Yeah. Where they leave yeah. out some of the, some of the words or yeah, or but vowels you can, or something. Yes, yeah. it would. Yeah. And you could still read it. You know, we could still read it and understand what we're reading, you know, and, and it's similar to something. Yahweh, Yahweh, he has given us so many witnesses, so many witnesses, 
you know, like like that. And I, you know, and I, I remember seeing that and, and not just, I mean, there's probably many of those things like that going around where, you know, they leave out the vowels or whatever, but you can still, you know, you're not even looking like you read and you, you're really not even looking, cause, you know, you but because you just know the words, you know, kind of thing. So you don't know necessarily notice that the vowels were missing, you know, so you're, and you're reading. So, Yahweh just has come past us about with so great a cloud of witnesses. So again, there are three that bear witness in the earth, the spirit, the water, and the blood, and these three agree in one. So again, we have those principles of the spirit, the water, and again, the blood. And, and it's interesting how he emphasized here, John emphasized, you know, not by water only, but by water and blood is what it takes for Yahweh's that's his sacrifice. It took water and blood and the spirit, you know. So here with the um with Abraham and Isaac, you know, um here we have uh well, it's a different manifestation. It, it's like the the principle of death, burial, and resurrection here, but blood points to death, water points to a burial and spirit points to a resurrection. So again, the manifestation changes, but the principle there stays the same in that it's witnessing to Yah Yahshua. It's all witnessing to Yahshua that he dies, he buried, he's gonna be buried, and he's gonna raise again the third day according to the scriptures. And that these, these witnesses, these three pointing up to the one, one, Yahshua the Messiah. And here with the children of um, Israel, here we have, you know, they're down in Egypt, right? They had to take out a lamb. They had to pierce it in the side. And they're doing that. Come the out, out's going to come blood, right? And water. And they're, uh, well, out comes blood even, you know? And so they had to be ready to go. So they come here to the Red Sea. You know, water, we have the principle of water. So we have blood with them killing the lamb, a sacrifice. They're coming to a, a, a body of water and they're following a phenomenal cloud and the spirit. And it talks about that cloud being the uh, spirit, you know, the angel in the cloud and things like that, you know. But here we have those principles again, those manifestations laid up, blood water and spirit and you know it's so interesting how it talks about in the bible they could have went another way they could have went a much easier way it even says it that way but they couldn't in the fact that they had this is yahweh's purpose so they had to go by blood they had to go by water they had to go by spirit just as we do we have to go by blood we go by water and we go by spirit and the principles are the manifestations are 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 may may uh uh change how what 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 it is here here we have a lamb you know um the children of israel had to take out a lamb or a goat here we have with noah a uh, vision of the flood you know and um the blood being placed on his head you know here with adam a different manifestation but the principle still the blood the water and the spirit you know and all down through so here in the tabernacle they're bringing a sacrifice you know uh, an animal sacrifice for a sin offering and you know and it's interesting i i believe if i'm not mistaken it had to be an animal for the sin offering it could only be an animal they didn't sacrifice anything else for a sin offering you know, um, so they brought other types of offering, wave offerings and, and things like that. But the animal, I believe, was the only acceptable sacrifice for uh, or, you know, for a sin offering. So here they um, so here you have an animal. So you're going to have blood. They wash that uh, animal in this laver of water. And the priest is anointed with this cup of holy anointing oil so that he can minister throughout this tabernacle flawlessly. So here, the blood, the water, and the spirit. And going up in this tabernacle, we come into that holy place and the most holy place, which is going to show the three in one uh, uh manifestation of Yahweh. We have a three-in-one figure up here, the Ark of the Covenant overshadowed by those two cherubims. Um, and Yahweh 
uh, said he would dwell between the wings of these cherubims, you know, and we have the principle of the flash of the Shekinah, you know, with Yahweh manifesting his presence within this tabernacle, and they couldn't come at all times into this tabernacle, you know. Um, so here again, these principles, blood, water, spirit, are pointing up to how that the record is the in heaven is the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. And these three are one so that we are left without excuse too. You know, we're left without an excuse uh, because Yahweh has laid this out for us to be able to understand it. And it's it's supposed to be the simplicity of this. We talk about that, the simplicity of this gospel. You know, um, you just can't um, I see that, Joel, and my time is just up. I just saw that. So uh, I'll just wrap this up, if you don't mind. Um, so here, again, uh, the simplicity of this gospel, We and if we stick with the witnesses that Yahweh has given us, and we stick with this pattern that Yahweh has given us, because Yahshua, or Yahweh, Yahweh Elohim, let me get this, is the archetype, original pattern of the universe, everything goes according to the structure and function of this threefold um, intangible tabernacle pattern. And those principles are laid up there. The manifestations are laid up in this pattern. And if we stick with that, you know, we'll be fine, uh, if I can say it that way. And I'm cutting it up a little bit because I don't want to get into something else and start taking up the time. But we have been truly, we, uh, you know, I just can't say it enough and that we are blessed. We are blessed beyond anything we could have. You know, I, I don't know how to say this so much so, but like, you know, we, I don't know if we could have, we even asked for this, right? Because y'all, it talks about in the scripture, we don't know what to ask for, right? We don't know how to pray, what to ask for and things like, so, you know, even out there searching, searching for God, this is not probably, I don't think we, what we would have expected, right? What, what we would expect it, but thanks be to Yahweh through Yahshua the Messiah, you know, he has made it possible for us to I'm just going to go to the 10th aim to inherit. He has made it possible for us to inherit eternal life now, a concept I never thought possible prior to coming into here, but to inherit eternal life now with in, in the kingdom of Yahshua, the Messiah, with the hope of immortal glorification. And I just want to say all praise, all honor, and all glory go to Yahweh through his son, Yahshua, the Messiah. And it's our only, our only hope of glory. And with that, I'll just say hallelujah and thank you for the time. And I hope somebody got something out of that. <clears throat> hallelujah. Thank you, Sherry. Our next speaker will be Dr. Charles Marshall. We have Marshall bookends for this class. <laughs> oh, boy. <clears throat> I was really enjoying class. I would have had no desire, ambition to get up. I was anxious to hear the next speaker, mm -hmm. but uh, that's life. Okay. Uh, I have enjoyed class. Uh, it's It's been a, it's a good class. Uh, everybody has contributed. So let's see what I can do here. We're starting uh, this, ch this, this chapter here, first uh, John, the fifth chapter, you know, this is where I'll just put it to you like this. Before I came into class, as far as the Trinity was concerned, I really didn't understand what the Trinity was. I just, it was just one of those deals where they said, you know, it's three persons in one. I didn't understand that. I didn't even think about it. Uh, I had a lot of questions, a lot of questions before I came into class, but really that wasn't one of them. And, uh, you know, you would read things uh, like this this chapter here, and uh, and it would you know pretty much confirm that you know that the idea of well, there's three persons in in God, but and I didn't even understand. I didn't even know before I came in here that they said that you could not understand the Trinity because I was not a Catholic. I didn't uh, didn't even know what a catechism was, and. In the catechism, of course, and it says that 
that you cannot understand the Trinity. Well, but since I've come into class, I've come to find out that some of the th that there's a couple of verses in this chapter that they cannot trace back. Uh, John uh, the fifth, uh, uh, John the seventh, and eighth verse in this chapter, the fifth chapter here. It says, uh, and I've got, I, I got, uh, I have a Bible here, and it's got the names of Yahweh and Yahshua in it, and it is not a holy name Bible. There are, like we say all the time, there's other uh, people that do know this name. It's uh, by the Yahweh's Restora Restoration Ministry. It's out of Missouri. And I bought the Bible simply for another witness that these are the names. Now, these people here use the names and believe in the names, but they also believe in all the old, uh, following the old uh, ordinances, the carnal ordinances, and so on and so forth. But in in the margin of the translator, if you will, or in their commentary, it says, as far as for John, 1 John, the fifth chapter, verse 7 and 8, this passage has been embraced by many as confirmation for the doctrine of the Trinity. Now, Daryl went to, uh, to uh, uh, cemetery school, or cemetery, in seminary, and maybe, I don't know, maybe he was taught this. I don't know. He can maybe comment if needs to. But he it says here that which is best defined through the, now I'm, I'm probably going to mispronounce this, a Hessian creed, which is spiritually unfounded. The following in parentheses is absent from all the texts prior to the 16th century. And this is what's in parentheses. It is five, it's uh, seven and eight. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. And these three are one. And there are three that bear witness on earth, the Spirit and the water and the blood. And these three agree in one. And this, of course, is where they go to really get into the Trinity and to teach the Trinity. But but in, in actual reality, uh, 7 and 8, if you really, let's read that, would you please? 1 John 5 and 7, for there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. And these three are one. There's nothing wrong with that. Read. And there are three that bear witness in earth, the spirit and the water and the blood. And these three agree in one. And I, I can't argue with that either. But yet that's where they used to go to prove the Trinity. But it doesn't say anything here in my book about there is three complete separate different you under, understand uh, uh, entities. entities that there's uh, three in Yahweh, you see, and but the three of them are one. And in the uh, in the uh, catechism, it says uh, it. Well, I'm not going to get it it's over my briefcase. I had to walk across the room, but it says in there, you see that that these that there are. Th three but they're distinct from each other and they're just so what they're trying to say here i suppose is that because the the word the holy spirit and the father you see that's three things so that's they're saying that this is separate but it's one but in actual reality these three th these three things it, it they're, they're agreeing I, I like i say i can't argue with that and because they're using three different manifestate what you would call manifestations okay so they cannot understand that these manifestations are one but yet and again you see it's hard to explain these things because what you're trying to explain when you explain the trinity is like they say it's impossible you can't you can't understand it but there are three but yahweh in actual reality is Yahweh himself and he manifests 
as Yahweh Elohim or El Elohim, and as Yahshua the Messiah, you understand, in the flesh. But that is Yahweh. That is Yahweh in his totality. You see, and it's like we go to uh, in the uh, in the physical, because Romans 119, we'll get Romans 119 and 20, if you would, please. Because we, you don't know who are, is going to be listening to these things. And it may be somebody that will hear these things for the first time. And so, you know, I, it's, it's better if I take and show four scriptures and break things down a little bit. Okay. Mm -hmm. Be Romans 1 and 19. Because that which may be known of Yahweh is manifest in them. For Yahweh has showed it unto them. See, you now, and that, that's another thing I, I'm just going to have to say this before I came down here. I know I've said it many times, but you know, uh, uh, I don't know. I just lost it. <laughs> and I've said it many times and I just lost it, but read that again, please. Oh yes. Okay. Now I know what it was. I was, I was told that really, I couldn't really understand Yahweh until I died, that it was a mystery and that when, once I died, I would understand these things. Okay, so read that again, please. Because that which may be known of Yahweh is manifest in them. So you can know something about Yahweh, read. For Yahweh has showed it unto them. Now, Yahweh has showed it unto them. And we are the them that he showed it to. Because through this vision that our founder claimed that he had, and which I can say not only claimed, but I know he did have through witnesses and through how we, he, through this vision has put this Bible together for us. This, this vision that he had is the only thing that I have ever seen that can put this Bible together and take and show how this Bible all the way down through is saying the same thing over and over and over again. And as we started out tonight in these lectures, that showing forth all the different manifestations, showing forth one principle, you see, and that principle is Yahshua going through his death, his burial, his resurrection, pouring out his Holy Spirit, and then that Holy Spirit being manifested in us today. This is the only thing, this vision is the only thing I have ever seen that can put this all together. And that's why this is so unique. And that's why I know that we're not up, wrapped up in some cult or wrapped up in some spurious uh, Bible study because it is all there written out and laid down. So, and he has given this vision to Dr. Kinley so that he could express this vision to us so that we could understand Yah something about Yahweh. We don't know everything. I mean, Boy, oh boy, I had questions before I came into class and those questions have been answered, but they've caused more questions. But the thing of it is, these are qu the questions that I have now isn't uh, something that I got to understand for my eternal life. It's just, you know, wondering really what things are going to be like in the next age and, you know, so on and so, you know, that kind of stuff. But this has taught me and this is showing us, you see, that we can understand something about our creator. Okay, now, uh, sorry I'm interrupting you. Uh, read <laughs> on. 20, for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen. So we can take something about him to understand something about him from the creation of the world. Now, that was another thing that I was taught before I came into class. You see that the Bible and science, they had a problem with each other and they couldn't agree. Since coming down to class, once again, because of this vision, 
and revelation that Dr. Kenley had and now has taught us and the world, you see, the world that will listen to him. Because he's done this, you see, we can take and get into scientific things or the physical things to show forth the creator. It's like you've got the law and the prophets in the Bible and in the creation, we've got the Bible and the creation at the mouth of two witnesses, two or three witnesses may a matter be established as it said in the law. Okay, could you read on please? Mm -hmm. Even his eternal power and Godhead so that they are without excuse. So here it's saying that we can understand his power in Godhead and that really we don't have no excuse. Now that is wild. We have no excuse. And since coming down here, we can see now that with the witnesses that are given, that we don't have an excuse. Now we can take something that's in the physical creation. We can take water, something that is necessary for life. <laughs> you know, it, it, the, the, all of our, all of the physical creation, you see, it, water is, is very important. Blood, water, spirit, you see? And one of the main things, water. And we can take that water. Oh, that water, there's so many. That one, there are many manifestations of water, but this is all dealing with the same principle. And with water, you can be in a, in a gaseous state. In a gaseous state, you cannot see water, you see? When you're seeing a cloud, you're seeing that water starting to condense. But water, in when it is, uh, in it, when it's uh, in its gaseous state, you cannot see, feel, taste, touch that water. It's only when it starts condensing that you can start to see it, feel it. Boy, in Florida, can we feel it? You understand the air is so thick with the water that you can feel it. And it makes everything a lot hotter. So you've got the water and it starts the molecules. The same molecule that is in the gas, you see, is in the liquid. It's the exact same molecules. The only difference is the molecules are moving at a slower rate. And that's what happens when you start feeling it. You start feeling it because it's slowing down and it's starting to condense, you see, into water. So the water is the same exact principle or H2O, two hydrogens, one oxygen. It's H2O when it's gases. It's H2O when it's in the physical, when it's in the, the liquid form, okay? And then you slow it down more or you turn, you turn the temperature down to below 32 degrees the molecules slow down more and more, and then you have ice, which is like Yahshua. The gas is like Yahweh. The liquid is like Elohim. And the solid is like Yahshua in the physical. Okay? But it's all H2O. So now then, we have taken something from the physical to explain something in the spirit. Which is, which in the, in the, I believe it's John, he said, we must worship in spirit and in truth. Before I came down to these, te to, to this teaching, to these lectures, I didn't know the first thing about spirit. When I thought about spirit, I thought of Casper the Friendly Ghost. That was the way I thought about spirit. I didn't have any idea what spirit was, you see. But we must worship in spirit and in truth. Well, boy, oh boy, after coming down here, I found out that I didn't have the first right thought about Yahweh, or as at that time, God. I didn't have one right thought. Everything I thought was taken away from me. One time somebody told me that, well, you know what, you know what they're doing to you down there? You know, you guys just brainwash people. And I had to think about that for a minute. And I had to say, yes, we do brainwash people down here. What we do is we wash out 
all the theories, the concepts, and the opinions that you have about your creator, you see, we wipe them out, we wash them out, you see, water, washing them out, blood, water, spirit, the words that he speaks, the words that Yahshua speaks are living water, and we're taking and cleaning out all those theories and replacing them with truth, and replacing them with facts, and replacing them with things that actually happened, and that now you can take and see and understand these things by looking at the physical creation. And then we had to learn when we come when we first come down here, we have to learn how to use the Bible. We I had read the Bible, I knew things that were in the Bible, but I didn't know anything about the Bible. I didn't know how to use the Bible. Even though I had read the Bible, probably just about everything in the Bible I had read didn't understand 99 and 44 100 percent of it you see but it come down here and then i had to learn how to use the bible because i found out that yahshua we can get that said to search the scriptures get that if you would please i believe that's what uh john, five, john 5 and 39 there you go i should know that by now mm -hmm. john 5 and 39 Ye search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. Now, and also get me the one where he was walking down the road and he was talking about searching, going back to Moses and all that. Now, when I when I heard when I read this back when I before I came down to this class, I thought the scriptures was the New Testament. Mm -hmm. I was told that we were a New Testament, you know that we were New Testament Christians. And that when I read that and thought about that, I thought that that was the New Testament. Not realizing, not understanding how stupid I was, that when he made these comments, the New Testament hadn't even been written yet. Right. Hadn't even been written yet. So what he was not talking about the New Testament. Now, we don't throw the New Testament out. We use the New Testament. The New Testament is necessary. You understand? Not hapooing it one bit. But the thing of it is, if you really want to understand what Yahshua was doing and why he was doing it and how he was doing it, mm -hmm. you have to have the law and you have to have the prophets. Now, also, when he was walking down the road, he was talking to the disciples. And what did he say? Mm -hmm. yes. Luke 24 and 25. Then he said unto them, O fools, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not the Messiah to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Now, I did not understand. I had probably even read this. I, I don't know. I don't remember. It didn't make an impression upon me. But now, you understand, here he is saying that if you want to understand what he was doing, you must go to Moses. Now, Moses is the law. Moses wrote the first five books of the Bible, which is considered the law or the Torah. So even here it is right in the book right in front of my nose you understand and it just went right over my head did not make an impression did not stick in my consciousness not till i came down here not until yahweh opened this thing up to me and to you you see did we understand not till he put his spirit within me i'm just going to put it to you like this it was not chuck I, i'll say it like this I don't even think Chuck had enough intelligence to even to put to even understand this thing from a from a physical or a carnal nature, not from a but from a physical nature. It took Yahshua to open up my mind and open up my heart to even to begin to receive this. I'm I, I'm a walking witness. You understand that. I cannot decide to accept this. 
You see, a lot of the things that I heard when I first came down here were very, very hard things to understand. But Yahweh caused me to understand these things to a degree that I that it changed my heart and it ch changed my mind. And then in the process, we're, we all keep growing and growing and growing in our understanding and, and, and in our knowledge of, of Yahshua. And we will keep understanding. We will keep growing in our knowledge and understanding of him until we take off the flesh or until he, you know, takes this whole thing out and we'll, we'll still be taking the flesh off. Because that's the problem we have right now is the flesh. It's, it's, I, I, I can't even, I, it's hard to even imagine that in the ages to come, we won't have this flesh to deal with. You know, we won't have these aching bodies, the arthritis and uh, people with heart problems and, and a lot of people in class have back problems and all kinds of health problems and cancer and just all of these things that take that that tries to wear us down and tries to take our mind off of Yahshua and thinking because you know uh, I don't know about your concept of of what you know it would uh, if you ex if you accepted Christ or Jesus into your heart and into your mind everything was going to be good if you're you was uh, you know you it would alleviate your money problems, uh, it would uh, alleviate a lot of your 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 health problems. Now I don't know why I thought that, because if you looked around the church, you see you've seen people with a lot of health problems, you saw people with money problems, you saw people with personality problems, you saw people with all kinds of problems. So why I thought or and people think. That if you accept Jesus into your heart and into your mind, that everything's going to be all right. That you'll be rich. You know, you you're, won't have money problems. I'll put it like that. You, you're, you won't have health problems, you see, and all of that stuff. But we are suffering, it says in the book, that we will suffer the same things common to man. It's just that we are going to have these problems. You see, but because we understand from a spiritual aspect, we understand that this is not the final solution, that this is just part of us being in this creation and learning and growing with him. And, and we're going to go through things. Look at we we look at the world right now and the state and the condition of this world right now and see what's going on. It's terrible. And down here in Tampa, it, it, it really got to me tonight. There was this woman that adopted this four-year-old four-year-old boy from Haiti. Yeah. And she beat him to death. Yeah. And she chronically beat the 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 the, the child. You know, you, you hear things like that and you see things like that. And I'm telling you. It makes you, it makes me, I'll put it like that. It, it, I feel so bad. I feel so sorry for these people out here that have to go through all of this physical torture, this physical pain, but they don't have any hope in their life through Yahshua the Messiah. Because that's the only thing that keeps me going is understanding Yahshua, this is the greatest gift that you could ever have. I will pass up on money. I like money, but I'll pass up on having a lot of money, you see, to understand this truth. I will pass up a lot of things. I will just, well, put up with what I have to put up with because it's going to be worth it. Dr. Kinley said if we could only understood and, and, and see what's on the other side, that we would do anything, anything to obtain it. Well, he has given us the witnesses in showing us manifestations 
and principles and showing us how to worship him in spirit, which we didn't understand anything about before we came down here, and in truth, which we didn't understand the first thing about before we came down here. We are special, special people. We are peculiar people, just like the children of Israel. The children of Israel was chosen not because they were special, not because any great attribute that they had. They were insignificant people. They were not great in number, you understand. There was not anything about the children of Israel that was special in any way. But yet he chose them and he put them in bondage, you see, in Egypt, just like we were in Egypt before we come into class. We were, we were completely carnal. We were completely physically minded. We, we were, all of, all of our goals was physical goals. Just like in Egypt, they were slaves and they were building the, 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 uh, Pharaoh's warehouses and building and building Pharaoh's monuments and, and doing building for Pharaoh. As a matter of fact, I saw a deal here the other day that they say that a lot of the written that's written languages started. A lot of your written languages started down there in Egypt and they, you know, perfected a lot of the workers. Don't know how true it is. It's just something that I read archaeologists and so on. Thank you. I see that. And it's, we are like those children and we were in bondage to the physical. We were enslaved. And then Yahweh sent his name down with Moses to deliver them and to give them salvation from their work and toil down there and brought them into the wilderness to, to worship them. And Yahweh has done that to us. He has taken his name, which means Yahweh is salvation. He who causes to exist, so on and so on and so forth. You see, he sent his name down to show, to bring them out through his name. And that was their liberation. And the same thing with us. He brought us into class. And one of the first things, if not the first thing you hear when you first come down here is about that name Yahweh, that title Elohim, and the name of Yahshua, the Messiah. So just like back there, he chose those people and brought them out into the wilderness or brought us into class. And now then is taking us and bringing us into Canaan's land or into heaven. And the reason why we can look through all this chaos, the reason why we can look at all the stuff that's going around and the torture and the people starving to death all over the world and being in, hey, the Middle East and, 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 uh, and uh, Ukraine is not the only wars going on right now. There's wars going on in the Sudan and uh, a couple other places over there in Africa. And I'm telling you, they are brutal wars that's going on there. They're wiping each other out and there's widespread famine there. Famine there. So, but we, through the understanding of this teaching, have hope and we have peace. We have righteousness, peace, and joy. And with that, I thank you for the time. I hope somebody got something out of that. I was just kind of hoping I wasn't going to get up tonight, but uh, best laid plans of mice and men. Thank you very much. And all honor and glory goes to Yahweh and to his son, Yahshua the Messiah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, everyone, for attending class. We welcome you back. Please come again and bring your friends and your enemies. Oh. Uh, we have classes on Zoom every Wednesday evening from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. And we also have them in person in Tampa, Florida. And they are on Friday nights from 7.30 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. And on Sundays from 11 
a.m. to 1 p.m. And those are at Silo Bend, which is a uh, industrial, like a commercial business park in one of the buildings there, 9036 Brittany Way in room 310 and uh, Tampa, Florida, 33619. And we hope that you can join us again. Let's all uh, close this class with the last two verses in Jude. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise Elohim, our Savior, through Yahshua the Messiah, our Sovereign, belong glory and majesty, dominion and power, both before all time and now and ever. Let's all say it together. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.